How's it going everyone? Brendan here with another episode of Gaming Details, and in this week's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Portal games. This week's episode was suggested by YouTube user Tyler Zell. Thank you for the suggestion, now let's jump right into the video. Up first, in Portal 2, there's a moment in the game after GLaDOS is transferred into a potato where she tries to disable Wheatley using a paradox. Um, true. I'll go true. Just before you get to this point, there's a room that has a poster in it that tells you what to do in case of a rogue AI, with a list of different paradoxes. What you may not have noticed is that although the paradox failed to work on Wheatley, all the Fragan turrets in the room start to twitch and short out, possibly implying that they're smarter than Wheatley. Continuing on the topic of Wheatley, let's jump to the ending of Portal 2. After the endgame credits, we get a cutscene where we see Wheatley, aka the Moron Corps, being orbited by the Space Corps. What you may not have noticed is that in order for something to have that much of a gravitational pull, it would need to have a lot of mass, which hints that Wheatley is incredibly dense. Heading on over to Portal, near the ending of the game you'll notice that some monitors have code scrolling through them. If you take a closer look, you'll see that in some of the lines there are ingredients for a cake recipe. For our fourth detail, we're going to the beginning of Portal, just before you see GLaDOS for the first time. You'll notice that there's a sign on the wall warning you to wear a respirator. This is because GLaDOS is known to kill people using deadly neurotoxins. Up next, have you ever wondered why the turrets don't seem all that strong? Well, the reason why is shown in this image. Normally, bullets are fired by a pin that will slam the back of the cartridge, causing a small explosion which sends the bullet flying out at a high rate of speed. However, the turrets in Portal are simply filled with bullets and use a spring-loaded piston to basically push the entire bullet out at a high rate of speed, but not nearly as fast as a normally fired bullet. Going back to Portal 2, during one of the levels, you'll walk through an area with a banner overhead reading, Bring Your Daughter to Work Day. In this area, you can see a bunch of science projects lined up with most of them being variations of potato batteries. However, one project that stands out is this enormous potato plant, and if you look closely, you can see it has written on it by Shell. Shell is the name of the character you play as in the Portal games, which means that this project could have been made by her and that one or both of her parents worked for Aperture. Continuing on the topic of potatoes, in the beginning of Portal 2, there's a moment where you're locked behind a door that seems to have malfunctioned. That is, until Wheatley comes and drops bird eggs that he found onto the door's mechanism, opening it right up. Later in the game, when we go looking for GLaDOS after she was snatched up by the bird, we can see that in its nest, it's hoarding a bunch of potatoes since her eggs were destroyed earlier in the game. This might also explain why the bird snatched her up in the first place. On to our next detail, shortly after finding GLaDOS in the bird's nest, she asks if you'll help her get back into her body, giving you freedom in return. She knows that you're skeptical of helping her, and goes on to say, This potato only generates 1.1 volts of electricity. I literally do not have the energy to lie to you. Earlier on in the game, the announcer tells you that all personality constructs will function on as low as 1.1 volts. Continuing in Portal 2 near the beginning of the game, GLaDOS says something in a sarcastic way to you, which has the announcer say that the sarcasm self-test is complete. Later on, Wheatley uses sarcasm, but the announcer does not pick up on it since he had never performed the sarcasm test. For our final detail, once again in Portal 2, when GLaDOS turns off the lights to prevent you from escaping, Wheatley says that he has an idea, but it might be dangerous. He turns on his flashlight, and to his surprise, he's still alive. Wheatley goes on to say that he was told if he ever turned his flashlight on, he would die. At the end of the game, you can see a dead core with its flashlight stuck on. Well that's all the time we have for today's episode, thank you all so much for watching. If you have a suggestion for which game we should cover next, leave it in the comments below. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to be notified when our latest videos come out. Thank you all again, and we'll see you all in the next one.